Hello everybody, welcome, welcome to what will be a very special and hopefully pretty short edition. Uh, we are going to be talking today about asset valuation. Essentially, how are stocks priced the way they are? Or why are they priced the way they are? So let's go ahead and dive in. What well, first point, just like everything in the economy, supply and demand are going to determine a stock's price with the usual kind of typical uh, fluctuations in supply and demand and uh, especially on the demand side, kind of typical uh, shifts uh, and everything that we've seen before. But let's dig a little deeper. What kind of things are people looking for? Why would people want a particular stock? So let's dive in. The first way that people might look into this is using something called fundamental analysis, right? This is uh, studying a company's uh, accounting books, right? Their accounting statements to determine their value. You're going to look at how how's their profit margins? How much revenue are they bringing in? Are they doing good sales? Uh, is it on an upward trajectory or a downward trajectory? Um, you might even bring into account something like, uh, do I expect the the demand for the service or the good that this company sells to be greater in the future or lesser in the future? Uh, this kind of thing like that. And if everybody is using uh, this kind of information to compile good uh, guesses on what the price should be, right, and then buying according to what they think the price should be, uh, we end up with this world of the efficient market hypothesis that tells us that this is a theory that asset prices uh, reflect all publicly available information about that asset's value. So all the information that's publicly available is picked up in an asset's value. That's what the efficient market hypothesis tells us. Um, essentially, we could call this uh, a reached a place of informational efficiency, right? Um, where the asset prices are reflecting all this available information. These uh, The stock prices show informational efficiency, right? Well, if this is true, uh, then any change in a stock price is, is following uh, some kind of news, some kind of shock. And, you know, the nature of news is nobody sees it coming and it's unexpected, right? Uh, so as the stock follows this uh, bouncing up and down according to news about the company or the market that the company's in, uh, it's going to follow a random walk, Right. This is a this is a statistical term. All it's saying is that the pa the path of this variable is impossible to predict because the the news it's what's going to drive it up and down. So this is essentially the uh, efficient market hypothesis. Everybody has all information. So the only reason a stock's price really changes is some positive or negative news. There's a lot of other stuff that might go into it though, as you might expect. So let's uh let's hear from very famous historical uh, economist, uh, economist from history uh, from the 30s, good old Dr. Uh, John Maynard Keynes, a uh, very famous economist, and he had some thoughts on the efficient market hypothesis. Uh, Keynes believed, yeah, maybe, maybe some of the same information is 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 based on you know actual company valuation, but he kept seeing these irrational waves of optimism and pessimism. People would get really excited about a company or really sprung on one particular stock and say, this is it, this is the one we should buy, or waves of pessimism, oh, this company is not worth anything, we need to run away from it. Um, I think there's no better example of these irrational waves of optimism and pessimism than uh, GameStop about a month ago, right? Everybody decided uh, that it was worth much more than um, kind of the typical Wall Street folk had decided it was worth, right, um, had uh, been buying and selling it at. Um, so it drove the price up. Everybody decided to buy, and obviously the price went up. And it was um, pretty clearly not linked to the valuation of the actual value of GameStop as a company, right? I think another, uh, that might be an example of the optimism side of this. The pessimism side, we, we might see this... Uh, Sam Adams stock uh, during 2007. Over the course of a month, it fell like 40%, 35%, something like that. Just a huge swing uh, for really no reason. Just everybody uh, in this kind of 2007, 2008 time was um, 
so nervous about keeping money in stocks and everybody was pulling out and it hit Sam Adams pretty hard. You know, was uh, GameStop worth twice or three times as much as a company um, today than it was two months ago? Uh, probably not. You know, was Sam Adams worth 40% less as a company uh, at the end of this month surrounding the financial crash? No, probably not. So clearly there's some aspect of, of this fluctuation that might be uh, prone to these quote-unquote animal spirits, as Keynes called them. Uh, Keynes also describes uh, stock pricing as a, a strange kind of beauty contest. And I thought, you know, giving you guys a, an example might help you out. So uh, we, I've got three gentlemen pulled up on the screen. Oh, four, I guess. There's there's a handsome devil in the corner, too. But no, these, these three guys in the middle have all won uh, Sexiest Man Alive at some point. That's uh, Chris Hemsworth, uh, Michael B. Jordan, and Ryan Reynolds. So I want you guys to think... If somebody told you that they were going to give you a prize, if you could pick uh, which of these three gentlemen were considered the most attractive by uh, the typical person. So kind of picture like a family feud kind of thing. You're not trying to get the right answer. You're trying to pick the most popular answer. Um, so which of these three guys would you pick? Well, it's probably not going to be the same guy that, that you consider uh, the most attractive personally, right? Well, Keynes thinks that stocks work the, work the same way, right? So if you ask somebody, uh, you know, what they think a stock is worth, you know, they might have an opinion. But as they're trying to buy and sell in the marketplace, they're not really basing that on their own valuation of what a stock is worth per se, but their perception of what they think other people might think the stock is worth. Or even still further out, um, you know, what you think other people might think other people think the stock is worth. And if I'm getting a little too out in the weeds, I think Keynes's quote might clear it up. It's not a case of choosing the faces that, to the best of one's judgment, are really the prettiest, nor even those uh, that average opinion genuinely thinks is the prettiest. We've reached the third degree, where we devote our intelligences to anticipating what average opinion expects the average opinion to be. That's what Keynes says in his, his general theory. And I think he's got a lot of uh, uh, pretty cogent points on this stock pricing thing. I certainly think that uh, they fluctuate in some strange ways, uh, but it is worth pointing out there's a lot of strong evidence that supports uh, the efficient market hypothesis that these prices really do reflect just about all the publicly available information in the marketplace. Um, so probably uh, some strength to, to both of these points. Uh, maybe some stocks are more governed by kind of this fundamental valuation, how much is this stock worth? And some stocks may be more prone to flights of these quote unquote animal spirits, right? But that's all I've got for you guys this time. Uh, be sure to let me know what kind of questions you have. And I'll see you next time.